Okay, and welcome to part one of this uh, video tutorial. This is another uh, basics boot camp series, and this tutorial is on how to fly the perfect ILS. So this uh, tutorial, because it's a boot camp series, will be targeted towards new or fairly new PMDG 737 NGX flight simmers. No previous jetliner knowledge is required, and no pilot or instrument knowledge is required as well. I'm Ralph Freshour. Um, if you have any questions or comments uh, after viewing these uh, tutorials, uh, please uh, either uh, private message me at the uh, avsim.net uh, forum where I hang out. Uh, my username is uh, rfresh737 or um, email me at ralph at primemail.com. Uh, this course date is uh, 5-29-2014. So um, there's actually going to be four parts to this. This is uh, turned into quite a large project, um, larger than I actually thought initially. Um, I'm releasing parts one, two, and three together. Part four is sort of a flight sim bonus demonstration. I've been asked to do one more uh, flight demo of a Boeing standard ILS. Um, so I'm going to be adding that within uh, a day or two, but I'm going to release part one, two, and three uh, together as a group. So part four will eventually uh, be on my YouTube channel. If you're a subscriber, you'll get a notification when uh, I put part four up there. Um, Parts one, two, and three it took an awful lot of work, awful lot of time, um, about a week of uh, uh, of effort to to put together. So um, once I get these three up there, I want to maybe take a day off and kind of rest a little bit before I tackle part four. So anyway, this is part one. This is the ground school, and this is really going to focus on IL, the the ILS setup and some background on that for the new folks. And then part two is going to be a uh, flight simulator demonstration, flying a standard uh, Boeing ILS. And then part three is going to be flying a non-standard uh, ILS. So um, you might want to take some notes as we go through this. I'm going to uh, show you on this slide uh, page numbers and references in, from our manuals, starting with the flight crew training manual. Um, most important one, which I highlighted in yellow, is the ILS uh, a diagram for the ILS uh, approach and landing. And that's on page 5.14. So you'll definitely want to write that down. And you'll, you'll definitely want to print that page out and, and make notes on it as you learn it and, and study it. Uh, and then there's ILS callouts. Uh, I just I referenced that it's on page 1.26. I'll I'm going to incorporate the callouts uh, into the ground school and into the flight demos, but I just want to give you the page number on where those where those are located. The FCOM one has some ILS pages uh, normal procedures in the NP.21.68 uh, and .69. And the F FCOM 2 has some interesting information regarding the ground spoilers, which I will cover in the ground school. But again, I'm giving you the reference uh, on page 9.20.17. So um, as I've said before, the material, the manuals that come with the PMDG 737 NGX is just, is just overwhelming. It's just mind boggling. And as I've also said before, I'm still learning the airplane, and so I'm finding um, the learning curve to be pretty steep. And I have a background in these types of aircraft and in this uh, training world. And I find the learning curve to be, be pretty steep, and I have to spend a lot of time digging through these pages to find the what I call the golden nuggets on a particular procedure or topic that I'm looking for. Um, so it it can be a very challenging task just to 
try to get a, a handhold or to 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 manage uh, all of the pages and the material that comes in these these books. So it's not um, it's not that easy. Here's that call out uh, on page 126 of the Flight Crew Training Manual. But as I said, I'm going to incorporate these right into the through the videos. Uh, but that's the page number for the reference. I also want to, where I can, I want to introduce limitations into the ground school. And I'm going to start with uh, max landing weight. Now, uh, my aircraft, as most of you know, is I have it configured as a BBJ. It's a Dash 800. That's a Boeing business jet, Dash 800. And so the max landing weight uh, for the Dash 800 series, I've highlighted here 144,000 pounds. All of these weights are important, and you really do need to to have them all memorized. Uh, but since we're focusing on an ILS, and which is, of course is an approach and landing, I highlighted the landing weight, 144,000 um, pounds. This is an FCOM 1 in the limitations section, L.10.3. Also, we have uh, landing gear extension, uh, airspeed limits, and we have flaps. 1, 2, and 5 uh, max extension air speeds. So I took this snapshot because this is right on the panel. But for those of you that have contacted me about having speed management issues coming in for the approach where you're coming in pretty fast, um, I just wanted to sort of touch base real quickly to say um, as long as you're under 250 knots indicated, um, you're okay to start your flap extensions and uh, landing gear is above that so if you're if you're under 250 you're okay for your gear as well um, but anyway these are some limitations that we uh, have to memorize we have to know what they are I wanted to make sure that some of the completely new uh, flight simmers who maybe don't have any pi real piloting experience at all uh, may not be aware, I I'm, I use the term downwind and base quite a bit in the video. So I just wanted to make sure that we all are on the same page in regards to what that means. The downwind leg, um, when we talk about being on the downwind leg, that's heading in a direction opposite of your heading when you land. So when you're doing touching, when you're learning to fly and you're doing touch and goes, uh, you learn how to fly uh, this box pattern when you do touch and goes. And and the the legs are, as you take off, it starts with this one called the upwind leg. And then you make a standard uh, is a left turn. And you're on the uh, cr what we call the crosswind leg. And then finally you turn on the, to the downwind leg. Um, and then you can roll onto your base leg and then turn right onto final and land. So uh, this is where we are when we're talking about being on the downwind lake, heading in a direction that's where we will require us to make a 180 degree turn, come back and head back towards the runway to land. So that's downwind and this is base, base lake. All right. Now, I talked about the flight, the manuals, the, the 3000 plus pages. And this one here for for ILS is probably the golden nugget. So uh, again, I'll say it's on page 514, and uh, it's in the uh, flight crew training manual. Print this out, and and start to to write notes about it. Now I'm going to talk about um, this. I'm going to use this as our as our base diagram as I go through our six steps on how to get set up to fly a perfect ILS. Um, so if you need to stop the video and do a printout of this so you can write notes on it, that's fine. If you want to write notes on a blank sheet of paper and start uh, making notes on these six steps, that's fine too, however you want to do it. But this is a golden nugget in that manual. In all those pages, this is your key to flying uh, stabilized, successful, um, perfect ILS approaches. So let's start. This is going to be step one. For step one, I'm coming in um, 
what Boyne is calling an in route fix. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but I'm going to be coming in on LNAV and VNAV. You can come in on radar vectors. They're fairly uh, similar. Um, not 100% identical, but they're fairly similar. Um, but I'm going to talk about coming in on the LNAV VNAV because I think most of us are flying with our um, uh, FMC, uh, having our route uh, loaded in. And um, so step one, uh, you're going to be selecting flaps one and you're going to be selecting flaps five. And I'm going to show you uh, a star, a standard terminal arrival route, and I'm going to I'm going to try to correlate this this uh, route here uh, to the star. Now here's a, an inbound route. It, it, it's called an intercept heading. So this is where you're sort of heading inbound uh, to intercept the localizer uh, and, and fly it on down to the runway. And this it actually can be thought of as sort of your base leg. Because uh, your base leg is your is the same thing. You're intercepting your final approach course, uh, which is the localizer. So this is kind of like your base leg, and this could be sort of like your downwind leg. Um, at least that's how I, I, I kind of look at it. But anyway, the important thing is on step one, um, we're going to be doing two things. We're going to be setting up uh, on the downwind leg, um, flaps, five, uh, flaps one and then flaps five. And by doing that, this is going to control your airspeed. For, so for those of you that are having issues uh, by coming in too fast, finding your speed way too high, um, this is going to control that because once you select your flap speeds, you're going to be targeting their maneuvering speeds. So in other words, you're going to be coming in um, on the flaps, flaps five maneuvering speed. So that's going to solve your uh, speed problems for you automatically. So that that's a great uh, step one to get set up uh, to control your speed to come in and and begin your approach. All right, now in this slide, I want to uh, correlate um, a star. This is uh, I'm actually going to uh, be have us look at two stars. This is the first one. Uh, I want to try to correlate the diagram that we just saw um, to a couple of actual stars. Now this one, it's fairly easy to see that we've got a downwind leg here. And in fact, um, I'm going to be flying this one in one of the demos. But the um, airplane will be coming down here eastbound on the downwind leg. So this is the downwind uh, base leg here and then final approach over here. Now the... Uh, area here I have in yellow, this is the the final, what I'm calling the final downwind leg segment. This is the final segment of the downwind leg. This is the base leg segment. Now for a standard ILS approach, uh, referring to step one on when we put flaps, five, uh, flaps one and flaps five out, um, I'm referencing in the flight crew training manual the diagram itself, page 5.14 uh, for flaps one, because that's pretty clear. Um, and additionally, on page 5.54 of the flight crew training manual, there's some additional textual description on when, specifically when to extend flaps five. And the, um, so those, are, so that's the, the Boeing standard. There's some uh, supporting uh, uh, reference, textual reference, in the, in the PMDG tutorial, tutorial number one on page 80 for flaps five uh, extension. So based on those three uh, parameters, here's uh, where we will be extending flaps for uh, what I'm calling a, a Boeing standard ILS. Flaps one will go out on the uh, last segment of the downwind leg. So uh, somewhere between the middle point and the end, somewhere in here, we want to call for flaps one. Then we're going to turn base and get on to the base leg. Uh, so we're going to turn here. 
And once we're, uh, now we've got some other things to do on the base leg. So after we turn and get onto the base leg, um, we'll want to call for flaps five. So that's that's how the flap extensions are going to go for, for step one. Uh, so flaps one here on uh, the latter part of the uh, downwind leg, and then flaps five here in the uh, beginning of the base leg. Now, let's take a look at this uh, second star. This one is not laid out quite as nicely as, as a traffic pattern as the previous star, but, um, and I'll be flying this in, in one of the demos as well. But here we are heading northeast, and here's the, the last, uh, what I'm calling the downwind segment, the last downwind segment. And this star actually ends here at the Boulder VOR, and then from here we have to pick up the ILS approach plate, and the ILS approach plate shows um, we turn to a certain heading and fly in here. This is our localizer intercept heading. So here again for our standard ILS, we'll be uh, expecting to put flaps one out somewhere in this area here on the latter part of the downwind leg segment. And then after turning, um, uh, turning left, at, in this case at Boulder, and just uh, getting established on the base leg, um, we'll call for flaps five. So flaps one here, flaps five there. So that's the uh, standard for step one for extending our flaps, flaps one and flaps five. All right, um, I'm s still talking about some of the ground school basics and I, I wanna show this screen on the CDU. Um, this is the uh, uh, init ref page. When you're when you're getting close to your your approach, getting close to your downwind leg, you're coming towards the end of your your star. You can press uh, the knit ref button, and this will call up uh, your approach reference page. And there's quite a bit of information on here. One of the areas I want to draw your attention to is this area right up here, and this will give you your reference speeds, uh, VREF, which is your landing speeds. And I've, I've kind of marked off here flaps 40 because I land at flaps 40. So this tells me my VREF speed for flaps 40 for this approach, based on my current weight, is 136 knots. If you're landing with flaps 30, then this is your uh, VREF speed, 143. If you've got an engine out and you're going to be landing at the flaps 15, you'll use this VREF speed. But mainly you're going to either be landing at flaps 30 or 40. And so this tells you what your what your reference speed is. And that'll become important uh, to know. Also on this page, you can see what your gross weight is. We want to make sure we're not landing over the max landing weight. So uh, if you press a knit ref, you can get a readout on your uh, current gross weight of the airplane. And I'll talk a little bit more later about radio uh, tuning and identifying radios. But we, we will use the CDU and the primary flight display, the PFD, to uh, verify that we have correctly tuned and, and identified the correct ILS frequencies in our nav radios. Um, so anyway, that's what's on the init ref page uh, for the approach reference. A lot of good information there. Now, as a side note, I want to quickly add for the new flight simmers that when you've got your route into the FMC, that uh, you will need to tell the FMC when you're on um, somewhere in your downwind or even before the downwind part, but sometime before you land, you're going to want to tell the FMC what your what flaps and VREF you're going to be landing at. And, and the way you do that is, in the case if you're going to land with flaps 40, you just double click on this line select key here, and that will fill in and populate the CDU page, and it will also copy those numbers over to your speed tape, and you'll see them show up on your speed tape. Um, if you don't do that, um, and you leave this area uh, with dashes like this, um, then you'll, you'll get a, a pesky warning down here in the scratch pad on the approach that you don't have your, your VREF uh, speed selected. You haven't picked your VREF speed in your flaps. Uh, so to avoid that, that message down here in the scratch pad, um, be sure you do that somewhere 
um, uh, as you get close to your downwind leg or in the early part of the downwind leg. Just select what you're going to what you're going to land and do a double click and that'll populate that and you'll be in business. All right. Now, I want to talk I want to spend a, just a little bit of time on this uh, chart and then uh, we won't see it anymore in the ground school. But this chart I've received some communications from some flight simmers that they find this chart to be a bit confusing. So, I want to talk about what it is and how to interpret it, how to use it, and then um, um, we, we don't have to come back and visit this because the FMC gives us some automatic help in determining some of these V reference speeds for various flap settings. But the first thing I did is I put a, a red line here because there's really two different areas on this chart. This area down here is is your uh, uh, flaps, your landing flaps, flaps 30, flaps 40, your maneuvering speeds. And so th this is a maneuvering speed chart for, for your various flap settings, all your flap settings. And the landing flaps are those VREF speeds that we just saw. Like uh, for me, it was 136, the speed back here. This is VREF for flaps 40. That's my landing speed, VREF. That's what we call VREF, 136. So for me, flaps 40, my VREF speed is 136. If I'm landing at flaps 30, it was, uh, what was it, 143. That's my VREF speed for flaps 30 is uh, 143. The area above it are the all the flap settings, and of course these are not... Uh, normally considered, uh, I have to say normally considered because of flaps 15 engine out, but they're normally not considered to be landing flaps. And and so these are minimum, uh, well it says minimum maneuvering speeds, I just call them maneuvering speeds. So let's take a look at flaps up for example. What's the maneuvering speed for flaps up? The maneuvering speed is VREF 40 plus 70 knots. So these are all VREF 40. Now, that's the part that I think confuses some of the flight simmers. It says VREF flaps 40, but that doesn't have anything to do with what you're landing at. You can still land at flaps 30. doesn't change uh, these numbers up here. doesn't change them at all. But maneuvering speed for flaps up is VREF, and, and it's the VREF for flaps 40 um, plus 70 knots. Flaps 1, it's VREF plus 50. Flaps 5, it's plus 30. So, for example, um, we know that my flaps 40 VREF is 136. We know that. So for flaps 15, my maneuvering speed is going to be VREF plus 20. It's going to be 156. Right? Just add 20 knots. For flaps 5, my maneuvering speed is going to be 166. 136 plus 30 is 166. I can still land at flaps 30 if I want. That's not going to change these speeds at all. These speeds are all based on flaps 40 VREF. So don't let that confuse you. All right. Now, you probably need to write down so that you can learn to memorize the flaps 15 VREF speeds. And later on, I'll tell you why. And the flaps 1 and flaps 5, the FMC is going to do a nice job of handling that for you. Uh, and it normally will do it for flaps 15. It will do it for all three of these uh, major flap selections, 1, 5, and 15. But there is a situation where uh, the FMC is going to get trumped by glide slope capture. And glide slope capture kicks you out of VNAV and it's not going to update automatically. And you may have to update for flaps 15. And, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this later on. But for now, I'm just saying you'll it'll be a good idea to memorize your VREF speeds. Flaps 15 is plus 20. Flaps 5 is plus 30. Flaps 1 is uh, plus 50. All right, so I hope, I hope that clarifies that on the chart. I won't uh, come back to this anymore. If you do still have questions uh, or you're a little bit confused still, go ahead and contact me. I'll, I'll, I'll try to do a better job of clarifying. 
And the last item here, this is in the flight crew training manual on page 1.4. You should print this out as well and, and keep it handy, really. So um, I had a couple of flight simmers ask me about bug speeds. They didn't know what they didn't know what bug speed was when someone you know they read in the forum people talking about bug speed. So I thought I would just kind of clarify these green. Uh, flap references on the speed tape those are called flap maneuvering speeds and so here's for flaps up uh, it's about looks like 206 uh, for flaps one that maneuvering speed looks like 180 looks like that might be 186 uh, maybe and for flaps five um, we've got the this magenta uh, I, uh, symbol here that is that is the speed bus what we call the speed bug and that it gets repeated digitally up here 168 so we happen to be I took this screenshot uh, when we had flaps 5 uh, set as the speed bug uh, we had flap 5 selected speed bug came down and so this is flap maneuvering speed for flaps 5 is 168 and so a speed bug is the is the magenta symbol that's the speed bug these green items are telling you what the flap maneuvering speed is for that flap setting it's just kind of a reference point so when we say uh set your bug for flaps five set your speed bug for flaps five we're saying set your 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 magenta uh symbol here to to where your flap uh, maneuvering speed limit is that's what we're, that's what we're talking about so that's a speed bug and these are your flat maneuvering speeds, these green um, references. All right, let's move on to step two now. So we've got step step one taken care of, selecting flaps one and five. And uh, step two is uh, on the intercept heading right here. So we can kind of correlate this to being on the base leg. And so we've got four bulleted items here. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually skip the first one and come back to it. But the second one, we want to look at the PFD. We want to look at the localizer and glide slope pointers to make sure they show up. Uh, because we've actually <laughs> I said we we're gonna skip it. We're we first thing we do is tune the ILS radios. And once you do that, then the localizer and glide slope pointers sh should show up in the PFD. Then uh, we want to arm for APP, uh, which is approach mode. And I, I want to mention this: these four magic words, cleared for the approach. You always need to be cleared for the approach before you can press approach mode, APP. In the real world, you, you have to be cleared for the approach. You can't just reach up and press that willy-nilly when you feel like it. Um, now, I know most of us don't fly with ATC. I don't, but I know some of you do, and some of you really like to immerse yourself into the realism. So um, if you do that, then you'll want to have it set up, whatever you're using for your ATC, to make sure they just clear you for the approach uh, before you press the APP button. If you're flying without it like me, you just say to yourself, like I do, ah, I've been cleared for the approach. Now I can press the approach mode button. And then uh, if you're doing an auto land, you'll want to, uh, that's the time right after approach mode to go ahead and reach up and engage the second autopilot. Um, so those are the, the, the four items. I'm going to talk about this first one here next. And once you've done all of these for step two, the last thing you'll really want to be monitoring from a call out perspective is localizer alive. And... Uh, I demonstrate that in in the flying demonstration, um, but we're we're coming in to the localizer, so we'll want to start tracking that localizer and not a localizer live needle. Um, then we're going to normally uh, press the uh, approach mode button once we've been cleared for the approach, and followed up by the second autopilot button if you've been cleared. I mean, if you're doing an auto land. So approach mode and command. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna deviate just a little bit, give you a little bit of old-fashioned background information, and I'll try to do this quickly. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, um, 
but I'm going to tell the new people how we uh, typically identify uh, a navigation facility because the step here says tune and identify. Well, we know how to tune. We, we dial in the frequency and, and click the transfer and put it over here in the active windows. Here's nav 2, here's nav 1. So that's how we tune. And how we identify it in the 737 uh, is different from traditionally, but I want to give the new people uh, an idea of how we uh, used to do it traditionally so you would know, and then I'll tell you how we do it today in the 737. On the center console, we, we see this is the center console, we have an audio control panel over here in ACP. Uh, this is for the captain, this is for the first officer on this side. The nav radios are here, which I'm sure we all know. Com radios are up here, VHF1, VHF2, we call those COM1 and COM2. COM3 is back here. Um, our ADF head is here, the transponder is located here. Now, the, on the ACPs, these are the mic select buttons. Um, just to give me some quick background on how these, how this panel works. The, the radio you want to talk on, you have to push one of these switches and it lights up. And only one of these can be pushed at a time. You push one, the other one extinguishes. Here the captain is talking on, you probably can't see it very well in the video because this lettering is pretty small, but this is VHF1, which is COM1. VHF2 is right here. This is VHF3. We can see the first officers on COM2. That makes sense, this radio. So the captain's on uh, COM1 right here. So those are the mic select switches. You, you push those to determine which radio device you're going to talk on. These are the receiver switches. Remember, this is an audio panel. So these will allow you to listen to the selected radio for any audio. And the way these work is these are these are push switches. You push them down, they they latch in the down position, so they're they're they light up and now they're activated and, the, and you can now receive. And if you push them again, they unlatch and they come back pop back up and the light extinguishes, like these are here, and, and now you can't hear anything. The the arrows on here are just uh, you rotate the knob. You can rotate them to control volume. So to traditionally identify um, a nav frequency that we've dialed in we would here it says nav 1 and 2 you push down and every 15 seconds you'll hear uh, a Morse code identifier and on the approach plate the ILS approach plate you'll see somewhere on there you'll find the Morse code identifier for that ILS that runway and you'll hear that through your uh, wherever you're, you're hearing, if it's your headset or the speaker, you may have the speaker turned on here. Uh, but anyway, you'll hear it every 15 seconds. You'll hear the Morse code, and that Morse code will positively identify that you've tuned the correct uh, ILS frequency in this case. And then when you're done with it, just push it again, and it unlatches, um, and, and you're through. In the simulator, you can just uh, mouse click it once. It, you know, it lights up. You can hear. Mouse click it again, and and it unlatches. So that's the tr traditional way that we used to do it. Now, in in the 737 NGX, we tune it. We identify the radio that we've tuned using the CDU and the PFD. On the CDU, you go to a NIT ref, and you take a look at the frequency you just dialed, 110.3. Uh, if you didn't make any mistakes, that's what you should see here, 110.3, ILS, runway 25 right. Course, your inbound course is shown here. So far, so good. Then we look over at the PFD, and we'll see the uh, uh, the ILS identifier. This is actually the Morse code identifier. It doesn't show us the Morse code, but it shows us the, the identifier. In this case, it's ILAS. And so we see that. And then we know between those two uh, displays that we've identified the correct ILS. So that's how that's done um, nowadays in the 737NGX. So uh, that call out localizer alive, uh, for those of you that may not know what that is on the PDF, this is the localizer needle. It moves left and right. When it's in the center, aircraft's right on the center line of the extended localizer signal. The localizer over here 
uh, tells us that the localizer uh, is to the right of us because this is where the airplane is right here. So the uh, ne uh, needle is displaced to the right, and if and if we want to intercept it, we've got to fly towards it, meaning fly towards the right. But when it's all the way over what we call pegged, um, when it starts to move off of the peg and starts to move inward, then then that's what we call localizer alive. Then you know it's alive, meaning it's starting to move. So we're getting close to the localizer. So that's what we mean by localizer alive. Now, um, let's go on to step number three, which is uh, localizer capture. Now, step three, we only have one item here, uh, localizer capture, uh, and that's set the heading to the final approach course. That's all you have to do is just marry it up, marry up the heading. Uh, my inbound is going to actually be 257, so I'm going to set my heading to 257. That's all I have to do on localizer capture for step three. So that one's pretty pretty clean and simple. So uh, the FMC will set the courses on both captain and first officer side automatically so you don't have to do that. All you have to do is just manually set the heading and just marry them up 257 or whatever it is of course for your ILS. Uh, but set the uh, localizer capture set uh, heading to the inbound course.